Cambridge is an interesting city. We're in, in a lot of ways, people often say that we're a tale of two cities, right? You have Harvard and MIT and Kendall Square and Google and Facebook and Amazon and all these, you know, multi-hundred million dollar institutions and companies. But we also have a poverty rate that's higher than the state average. Uh, death by overdose has doubled in the last year. And we have upwards of 500 people on our streets and in our shelters. We don't always live the progressive values that we say that we have. So, and by that I mean people will come to city council and will say, I support affordable housing, but I don't really want it in my neighborhood because there'll be traffic. We have to stop saying but. We say and we're proud of our progressive values in this city. We don't always live them. And that is something I want us to start doing. I think we have an incredible police department here in Cambridge. I absolutely do. And, you know, we only focus on things that don't go right. What we don't see are the hundreds of interactions that our police officers have with people in distress that don't lead to arrest, that don't lead to a restraint, that don't lead to violence. I think one of the things that keeps us um, as good as we are is our ability to question ourselves, to self-assess, to look in the mirror, and to admit that we're not perfect. I issued a statement that um, called the video disturbing. It was. If you're someone out there, police officer or not, who could watch what happened and think that that was an enjoyable experience for the people involved, I don't know what that says. That says more about you than it says about me. That was disturbing. It was disturbing for the young man who was restrained. It was disturbing for the police officers. They don't want to do that. And it was disturbing for the bystanders who, if you've never been in a restraint or had to restrain someone, are watch, they're watching something that looks incredibly violent because it is. I am a social worker. I have had to restrain hundreds of young people in my work. Teenagers, people much larger than me. The reason you have three to four people do that restraint is not because you're trying to harm someone, it's because you're trying to reduce the risk of harm. So I think that the restraint was probably, in and of itself, was probably justified. The punches are where my question comes in. Um, I've been a certified trainer in crisis intervention, which includes restraint training for 25 years. I'm a certified trainer, which means I train other people. Never has punching been a part of that training. Was that officer following protocol? If he was, then is that the protocol we should be teaching? Um, was it just a split-second decision because he was in the moment and thought this is what I had to do? That happens, right? So that to me is where I think, where I'm curious about why that decision was made. This city has the potential to really be this beacon of social and economic justice in a way that other cities can't. We're not huge, but we're big enough that we're not a small town. We have incredible financial resources. We have incredible institutional resources. We have uh, some, some of the smartest people in the world living here. Um, and so that promise... I, I, I just, I love it.